declaring the end from the beginning. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Bear fruit to God, that your fruit should remain. wanted to share that with you guys. You share them. Oh. <laughs> so here is, let's wow. see. Wow. And um, that is beautiful. So this here is where the brazen altar would be. Um, and then you have the outer court here and the um, the water laven would be um, right here. And this is the, the east side, the east gate entrance. Um, and then we've always had in our minds the, the Holy of Holies being its own closed compartment, but actually um, as Andrew understands it, as the scriptures say that it is actually a screen. Um, and so it's really interesting. So on the other side, you would have the menorah that would be reflecting on, on this outer part as well. And then within that, um within this place then then the holy of holies which is just like this incredible shaft um and so then you have the two different pieces of leather the um the red dyed um leather and then you have the other i don't remember how the top treated leather part is um but the idea that um that it could either be removed or that the sunlight could then come through, um, illuminating the, the most holy place. And, um, and given that the Holy of Holies is like a column, you know, just envisioning, you know, Yahweh's spirit just, just descending as the, the pillar of, of fire. And, um, and so, anyway. Oh, isn't, I am at a loss for where I, I knew you had purpose to finish it before the Moedim, and you did. And you did a fantastic, like, I, what an art, what an, a gift you have. And then, so that's Betzalel and the other guy anointing in, you know, miniature, just in you, you're able to create this structure. How long did it take you to do that? I wasn't counting the hours. I mean, I pr it probably took at least, probably took 40, maybe, maybe more. Um, 40 oh. hours. 40 yeah, hours. Okay. I mean, it probably That's took still... like two, two wow. weeks. To do. My intention was to have it erected on the first day of the year. Um, so, but I finished it hours before the ending of our seminar, which was, you know, <laughs> just several days later. So that, that worked out really well. Um, but anyway, I did go to architecture school, so I do have a background in, in building models. Um, but what was so awesome was the way in which it came together. Um, I was just so amazed by like, because in some ways, you know, when I read the Torah portion of Betzael and the spirit coming upon him, I wondered the differentiation between prior to having the spirit, him being a craftsman, and then when the spirit came upon him, him just being like, wow, you know, look at, look at what I'm making. <laughs> And similarly, I kind of felt like that as I'm building the tabernacle, it just, the way in which it was organized, the way in which I put it together wasn't of my own thinking. And just even noticing, like, I wasn't having to redo anything until I actually got to the Holy of Holies, and then it wasn't perfect. And then, yeah, I was just like, it's got to be perfect. And I was like, you're right. It's the Holy of Holies. <laughs> I had to redo the um, the leather covering too because I at first I just did a fabric. I tried to be true to the materials, and um, so then I went out and got sheepskin and and dyed it and um, yeah. So so it, yeah. it, it came really really well. So I'm hoping that um, Andrew was really impressed, and so I'm hoping to partner with him and to be able to you know, replicate some of these and and get them out and. Um, but what it was just, it was such a joy. And honestly, also the other thing that Yahweh had me do, he, 
he had me like burn um, frankincense um, in my uh, aromatherapy. Um, he also had me put on priestly garments. I was always to wear purple and blue and white. I don't know if it's just that I don't really have a lot of red in my wardrobe, but every day it was important that I was dressed appropriately in priestly garments to work on his tabernacle with the frankincense burning, if you will. And then oh. just listening to, to praise music. And I was just like, the, the joy and the delight, you know, it was just um, amazing. Okay, that's just so beautiful. Praise Yahuwah. Oh, for <laughs> I remember you were showing us just the rib. It was it looked like this, <laughs> you know. And then, oh yes, oh yes, totally right. And then now to see the finished product. Has Andrew seen this finished product? I mean, I showed him at the end of the um, at the yeah after you had left on the webinar. So I'll send oh, him more more detailed pictures, but yeah, so. Oh, so wow. You got to see that. And I'm glad to get to be able to share that um, with, with the rest of you all as well. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. really and, and so it's like, this is like one of those things, kind of like the garden story where we look at it and it's like, huh, we, but there's so much in it, the details, the intricacies of it. So let's 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 start off simple. So Sister Ashley, can you hold it up again? And oh, okay, let's try to use our. What does this remind you of? Like I know from the view, what does it remind you of? Like maybe hold it up so that it's like like this. Oh, okay, this like that. What does that remind you of? It looks like a dome. It's a. It's like a big uh, arena, like a conference center to me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so, so in Hebrew, the word garden is an enclosure. Madison Garden. Enclosure. Garden. Right. If you turn it up the other way, it looks like a, an egg in the womb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you say womb? Or an egg in the uterus? Whatever. whatever. Egg in the exactly exactly yes and also look at i was just going to say this is what i see the eyes the eye oh yeah yes I, yeah yes oh yeah yeah so think of who's the apple of yahuwah's eyes think of that for a second right the apple of his eyes like the pupil, like a pupil means student, you know? <laughs> and then you look at terms like in the midst. This is what I mean when you start to see these things and you're able to have, hold this mental image in your mind. And I don't know, but to me, I, and I expressed this to Andrea, I thought it was just, but it looks to me like a mountain too. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And you know when it's mountain, you know, right? And there's so yeah. many things. There's so many other things that it. And I'll show Part. Go ahead, brother. I was thinking about the mountains around Jerusalem. You know? I think those mountains were the seven mountains around Jerusalem. I think it's Adam, Zeph, all the way to Lamech. The seven monkeys that priest, first one. They just sit right. down. They just sit down around Jerusalem in a group. They came the mountains. Yeah, and, and you see, if you remove the, the first, the covering, then there's more revelation, right? Like the, in the colors, in the, you know, in what do they, the, what is it called? The framing, it's the rib, right? That's what Andrew calls it, the rib. The ribs. Right, and so you look at, look at this hand, <laughs> right? Look at the hand, and there's, what is it? There's five at the upper, so now look at the menorah. Just I want you to picture the half of the menorah, right? So there's, uh, okay, forget the menorah for a second, but like the hand. So there's five fingers, am I right, at the top? So in total, there's 10 ribs, right? Is that, I'm counting it right, right? 10 ribs. Exactly. So, the hands, right? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And there are so many things too. And, and you know, it's just 
That could be the so five books, know. five books, and the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow! Right, right. Five so imagine a, a life-size tent like that. Mm -hmm. Imagine we're inside and we're singing. Yes. It's a dome structure, and and you know the the the, the covering that's dyed in red. You know when when a when you're in a, an enclosure in a dome shaped structure and it is covered in red, it does something to sound. It mm -hmm. elevates the sound, uh, the the frequency. It hits this perfect uh, what do they call it pitch, and it creates this the sound frequency that it creates is is healing. It restores. Remember, I I I was I, I came across um, a study where you're when you sing, you create harmony in a in a dome structure, right? And then so this this guy decided to extract the the sound frequency that he was able to produce while he was in a dome like that, covered in a red color. The dome itself was covered in red color. So he extracted the sound. He put it in a, a some kind of computer technology, whatever, to process the sound, to, to put it into numbers, right? And so what he found, Sister Ashley, you're probably gonna, is that the sound creates these structures, these beautiful structures, and it's unique to the sound that it makes. So now you look at the new Jerusalem. We're, we're given a new song. Think about that. So we're singing, this new song and this new Jerusalem is being formed. Is it out of our our chorus as as as, as Ekad and Ekad? We are singing glory to His name, and it's creating oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the new Jerusalem is as a result of the sound that is coming from our mouths, from our hearts and praises. Is this is what was blowing my mind? <laughs> That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I can show you the video. And you send that to me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you send it to me? Absolutely, yes. And I know I was kind of like, oh, because I wanted us to appreciate so much what I was trying to say, but this is the end of it. Like when we were studying the new song, I will send you the, the video. Okay. Thanks. Of, of the tomb, sister. Then Go what ahead, sister. I think when you were talking about the inside of the red dome is going back directly to the womb. You know, and that that is it is all the, the big red red dome in which we are being formed and shaped and uh, and in terms of the new song, it was amazing. Like as soon as I finished completing it, it it hit me so hard. There had to have been a song. There had to have been a song every time it was erected that they all just sang because I just wanted to sing it so bad. Uh, <laughs> Wow, there, there was, there had to be, and there was. That's right. what I mean. Unconsciously, it's done today to this present day. Like you know, people put on music to get into to set the mood, right? To set their, you know, their state of being. So, and um, Ash, question then: Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahqua. <laughs> think that that was this. And we've overlooked it all these years because we've been doing this rectangle square thing. Oh, now you're starting to see it. Sister <laughs> Ellie, if you were to look at the Ugarit, is that what you call it? The temple of uh, the Babylonian, ba ba Babel, the Tower of Babel? That is a rectangular structure. A and remember El Shaddai, the name, the Hebrew equivalent of the name Shaddai, it calculates to 300, 3.14, which is a it's a circle. Wow. <laughs> what? Um, I would like this video, your sending sister Donna, and I would like to understand more about this two or three times since I've heard you talking, I'm like, I'm interested. Now she's shown me this thing. And I'm like, I'm interested. <laughs> you know, I'd like to understand. Praise Abba. And and guess what? Um, the song. If you look at the new song, 
I love, this is what I love because what I, what was impressed upon your testimony as you were creating this tabernacle sister is that the rejoicing in the process of making it, you weren't like fixated on the, oh, the, 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 the destination, like when it's going, how it's going to look like, oh, you know, like you were just in the moment. And so because you're in the moment, you were being moved by the Ruach. So you're doing things just flowingly, right? So the new song, you know this, the song in, in Hebrew, is, the root word is sure, sheer, and it's journey. So it's in the journey. So we're going to get this. We are all in this journey and we're going to get a refreshed, a renewed journey when the, the kingdom comes. Right? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's all related. Honestly, and, and Sister Ellie, we're, we're Yahoo willing. What I was just wanting to show us, what I'm hoping is to be a simple, just simple look at Matthew 5. Because the Beatitudes, we're going to see that it is approaching the tabernacle. But go ahead. If someone else wanted to say something, I think. No, I was just going to praise you because, you know, Yahusha did all this. You know, he completed all this for us. You know, he, uh, you know I believe he, he unseated, he, he descended to the lower parts and unseated the enemy, took away the keys. You know, I think the keys were the book of the law and the book of the covenant. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know Way those keys that he was using, he was using them, uh, but he was using them, uh, he was using them wrong, though. He was using them uh, illegitimately. That's what mm. it says. The book of law is good if you use it legitimately. <laughs> he was using it illegitimately. Mm -hmm. you know, put under, he was putting them under bondage because he was saying there's everything backwards. Everything was backwards. Taught in the Levitical. That's the same bunch of people over running the thing over now. You know? mm. But that's the thing about what Florence said, because I think I think God has always had a righteous sea line. And he's always protected through all of this. That's us. And to Absolutely. that, the, the tabernacle that, that we have been taught is in direct opposition to that. I mean, yeah. so circular, yeah. so instead it's rectangular. It's a male piece, so they make it a female piece. If it's supposed to be vertical, they'll make it horizontal. I mean, it is exactly 100% opposite of, of what it, it they, is. It's supposed to be in, they're going to make it out. It's supposed to be up, exactly. they're going to make it down. You know, it's just, everything's mirror. Everything's mirror. Like, like when you're on your That's last... what the enemy uh, does? Well, I got a revelation. <laughs> everything's last, backwards. When, uh, you guys were right? talking about, from the last teaching when you guys were talking about uh, how Judas went out and hung yourself. Well, think about it. Yeah. You know, Yahusha was a sacrifice to the Father for us, but Judas was a sacrifice to his father, Satan. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a he, was, he hung himself on a tree too. Right, he was a sacrifice that, to his father. <laughs> that whole that whole section, I was going to tell you, that whole section just blew my mind. Yeah, like from the part from when the the bread, the bapto, meaning the baptism, then that whole thing, like. All the way up through the tree part where he, like he just said, just blew my mind. It was just like, oh my goodness, uh, yeah, look what, it, look what he did. That right. was fascinating. Honestly, praise Abba, right? Sister yeah. Ashley, you're gonna say something? No, no, I'm just wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you think it's intentional? Do you think someone is intentionally wanting us not to see the the all these things? You know why it's so important for us to have the right mental, the image, at least a picture in our mind, because we are made to carry the Im image of our, of the most high Yahuwah. So in, in what the, the mental image that we carry in our minds, that's our intents, if you think about it. So if I am, I think I had shared this with you in the past, what's really helped me in my closet time, in my secret time, in the secret place, right? Is that when I, I can't really pray on the, what, what's the word? Um, if somebody, I, I, I'm not like that. I know Sister Linda is the same thing. I can't, I, I have to really be moved to, to be pray, to pray. I'd have to. And one of the things that, um, that helps me is, is the, the envisioning the tabernacle. So I think I've shared this with you, right? Like, I, and, and when I, I do envision approaching the tabernacle. So we see the process um, in Matthew 5 laid out for us, 
right? So, you know, what we hold. So I guess what I'm saying is, think about it. Your brain cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's not real. So in prayer, you know, you are declaring and you, you, what you're thinking about is more real. What you're intending, what you're declaring, what you are, the, the heart behind your your request, your supplication, your thanksgiving, your offering of praise is more real than reality. Because we know that this is, everything is, you know, is made from things that are invisible. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so here I wanted, here's my notes. It just really just some few things here that I wanted to uh, talk about. So, this is the Beatitudes, right? And I love that Sister Ashley started off with showing us a model of the tabernacle, the, the true tabernacle, because it sets us up. And so look at this. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. <laughs> okay, so, okay, how can you, so, okay, let's break down the words a little bit, right? So he went up. This is a beautiful term. Yahusha ascended. So he's going up. He's getting ready to offer up ascension, right? And look, <laughs> into the midst, right? That's the root word of going up. Ascending where? Into the midst. Okay, that, that word ana in Greek. And what else? The other root word of that stem word is basis. Or a stepping, a walking, that with which one steps the foot. So this is why I felt it was appropriate since we've just done washing each other's feet that we should um, ascend. We should go up to the mountain with our Mashiach and enter into the midst. And we do that by looking at the steps, like walking, approaching him into the midst, right? How, how does that look like, right? So, and that's just in the word, he went up into a mountain. And that word mountain is interesting as well. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. I, I thought it was interesting too that you're going up onto a, up into a mountain. So going up and then you're going inside. You're going into. You see that into the mountain. I thought that was interesting too because we want to be in the set apart place, right? And then when he was set, his disciples, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. The word kathizo in Greek, when he was set. So, you know, to a point to confer a kingdom on one. I thought that that was interesting. So sometimes we, this is what I mean when we read the scripture, right? We, okay, we're going to read the Beatitudes and we just get right on. <laughs> we don't take the time sometimes to visualize. But so now that we have a little bit of a mental image going on in the tabernacle and, you know, because this is, remember that uh, Moshe was given the tabernacle and was given exactly, was told by Yahweh to make it exactly according to the pattern I showed after you. So there's something there that is to be paid attention to, right? So, and also I thought it was interesting when he opened his mouth and taught them. And Sister Ashley, I, I know Sister, um, Andrew has talked about the mouth, right? <laughs> and I have a little bit of a, I just take pictures for my personal study, okay? So when I'm doing my little study, oh, there you go, okay? So that's the little gate, yes, Sister Ashley is showing the gate of the the outer court right the gate yeah oh that looks like a mouth yes this yeah, is like the the end of the end. yeah exactly yeah, exactly right right you see well, that's interesting wow 
and and also you know how in the 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 inner court you know how it's made up of the 10 divisions in total it looks like a mouth too right so anyway so what i i, I thought it was interesting because you know you look at things a bit differently i guess is what i'm trying to say so now we enter into verse three where it says blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven of yahuwah so what is we talked about we looked at the guard the tabernacle it looks like an enclosure it looks like the garden so we know that we are being restored to the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of yahuwah right which is the garden so in revelation there's going to be the new jerusalem that's the new kingdom that's coming right but so you can see already that where what's in front of us is the tabernacle is the kingdom so, so so okay but before we do that let's look at the word blessed because you know we have our um you know, we all have our, um, we, we, the word blessed is one of those overused words, don't you think? It's the words that it's kind of like, hey, uh, you know, how are you kind of thing. And then, you know, we don't really think blessings. We, we always say it. We, we gotta, we wanna understand, we wanna have a fresh appreciation of the word blessed. Okay. And what did I have here? Oh, okay. I had here that the in his mouth in Greek, it's stoma right in greek and i thought it was interesting because it was very close to the word stomach right and then and the word of the greek word stoma means since thoughts of a man's soul find verbal utterance by his mouth the heart or soul and the mouth are distinguished it also means stoma also means the edge of a sword so when yahusha was opening his mouth we know hebrews right the word of yah is quick and powerful it's a two-edged sword already you can see that there right okay so the word bless. So in in Greek, they do a, a where are we here? Blessed. Here we go. In Greek, makarios, it means blessed and happy. Okay, that's still our we normally use that word a lot. Okay, but what what is what is the you know what is the um, the Hebrew word for bless? It's barak, right? And I just want to read this from Jeff ben Benner. Okay, the Hebrew verb barak means to kneel. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little, okay, to kneel, as seen in Genesis 24, 11. So that's the root word, barak is to kneel. However, when written in the PL, PIL, or in the stem form, right? So you got to look at the root stem, right? Uh, in the stem form, it means to show respect. Okay, so that's why it's translated as bless, as seen in Genesis 12, 2. A related Hebrew word is beraka, meaning a gift or present. From this, we can see the concrete meaning behind the stem form of the verb barak. It is to bring a gift to another while kneeling out of respect. Wow, just think about that. And, and now we look at uh, if you enter into a courtroom, right? Like if you go before a judge, you, you kind of kneel before them, right? So out of respect and then so the extended meaning of this word is to do or give something of value to another so elohim respects us by providing for our needs and we in turn respect our yahuwah by giving him of ourselves as his servants mm -hmm. so that takes on a whole new meaning when you're looking the word the beatitudes sister ellie go ahead <laughs> Um, when I was, this was years ago, and I came across this, and I, I had um, in my mind, you know, this, this blessing idea was a little different. Hmm. And when I realized that my father was coming to me and hmm. kneeling like we do with children kneeling to come down on my level mm. and, and lifting up his hands and offering me a gift. Oh, this is beautiful. And, and it just was so 
It was so beautiful. Hmm. It, it shifted my whole relationship with him to, to realize how tender and kind he is and how thoughtful he is and how, you know, I don't know too many, I don't know too many adults that will get down, kneel down beside a child so that they can look at them in the face. Hmm, this is the first I've heard of it, Sister Ali, other than our Abba Yahwa. First of all. No, my mother would do that. She was a very good teacher, and all of her children knew that they loved that she loved them. Oh, but that's the only person that I had ever seen or noticed besides myself whenever I because I copied my mother. But there's not too many people I've seen do that. And our father, having that heart, was just so blessed to me. Oh, wow. That's such a beautiful share. Thank you. Wow. Because you know what? It makes me think of when Yahuwah descended from above and picked up dust from the earth. And he formed it. And he blew. He nafak his, he nafak his neshama of kai <laughs> breath. His the breath of life into his being. Isn't that a form of bowing down and you know giving a gift? The gift of the breath of the Almighty to us. Absolutely. <laughs> right? And, and it's the same thing. Yes, brother. Go ahead. It made me think about Joshua when he was wrestling with Yahuwah and he said, Bless me. Mm. Or Jacob, excuse me, Jacob was wrestling with the angel, Yahusha, and he said, bless me. And I, I never really understood that fully until now like, that he was saying, you know, show me respect, show me honor. And so he made him a prince, changed his name to Israel, made him a prince. And then we are, we are, we are Ephraim, so his name was passed on to Ephraim, so we are princes. We are a prince and princesses in Yah's kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and you know, it's the same thing, right? It, when in, in Exodus 19, when, you know, when the children of Israel were to prepare themselves to wash their, you know, their, their garments and be prepared because Yahweh was going to descend to the, you know, Mount Sinai to meet with them. It's the same idea. You see how it's the pattern, right? So, and then I think of, so I, I think of Psalm 144, 5. And oh, 144,000. Mm, okay, <laughs> 144, right? <laughs> Bow it's down. Your... Right. <laughs> right. Right. The bride, exactly. Look at this, right? Oh, bow down your heavens. This is to bow down, to kneel. Oh, Yahweh, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. What happened at, in Exodus 19? And, and if you look at the garden account, you're going to see uh, the, what is it? The, uh, the mist that's going up, the same word, ascend to the, to the, you know, to the it, it, words ascending, mist, it's like a smoke. Go ahead, Sister Ellie. <laughs> he said that if Israel would hear his voice. Hmm. Yes. Like Abraham heard his voice and and I'm picturing this breath, his voice coming out mm, yes. and, and how he breathed on them at Mount Sinai and they didn't want to continue to be breathed on. Mm, and then oh, Messiah wow. said the promise of the Father and he breathed on them and he told them, Wait in Jerusalem. And they received the Father's breath, this precious gift that he bowed down to offer. Hmm. And it's it's like how much pride and arrogance we have mm -hmm. to turn down the offer of the precious breath of heaven. Oh, yes. Only when it's hidden from us, right? Only when we are given lies. And that's Cause... why the enemy wants to lie to us so that we won't value and treasure 
our creator as much as he values and treasures us and therefore interrupts our ability to commune with him and to receive his gifts. Hallelujah. I mean, and this is what he that hath more shall be, he that hath more shall be given. Even that, you know, he that doesn't have, even what you have will be taken away from you. What does that mean? It's, it means, you know, you don't know, you don't have within you the appreciation or the understanding or the knowledge of the value that is before you. And because that's the case, then what you have, so imagine you're walking along, uh, you know, the side of some park, whatever, and you see precious gold. You're seeing, but you don't know it's precious because it was never told to you that it's precious. So you walk right past gold. And somebody told you, oh, that's fool's gold. It's not worth paying attention to. I know. So even that which you've seen will be taken away from you. But because you have inside you the gnosis, the yada, the knowing of the preciousness, the value of the breath, the neshama of life. Oh, that I love the neshama. I know Sister Florence knows that. We've been studying on the breath before we took a pause and we went into the prayer mode and the offering. But so, you know, Yahuwah exemplifies for us Matthew 7, 12, all things, whatever you, we would that man should do to us, do even so to them. So do what to others, what you want them done to us. So that's, so basically when I look at the word bless or barak, I am seeing Yahuwah initiating. He's the one who, you know, who loved us first. That's why we love him because he loved us first, right? So there's this initiation and it, it just, it makes it a re our reasonable service just to respond back to him in, you know, and bow down to him as well, right? So do you imagine? It's just beautiful. So when we look at the nine Beatitudes, I see the nine provisions that Yahweh has given us. Every time you see blessed, this is kind of now what we're going to have in our minds, in our hearts, right? A different appreciation of the word blessed. So he's given a nine sets of provisions for us. And because he's given us the abilities, the, the, the abilities, we also have our nine response or responsibilities, right? So our responsibility is our response to the abilities that he has given us. You know, so if you look at 1 Peter 2, 10, I think it says, he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness so that we can be, and you know, it says unto the knowledge of our Mashiach, so that we can be a partaker of his divine nature. Oh, how beautiful is that? So here's my little rendition of, <laughs> of the, the nine uh, Beatitudes. And I couldn't help but, uh, you know, the song, Psalm 92, you know, it goes through my being. Because if you read Psalms 92, I just see this as one of those day-to-day, -day, you know, enjoying the journey the process of what takes place in there and we're not you know again this is this is a picture for us um so that uh, to me it sets the intent of my approach is that's why for us to have a good understanding of the tabernacle it it helps set our intent or it it to me at least it helps me when i enter into the secret place of yeah this is how i I, I come to him in prayer. So I, I come to him in gratitude. So I know that I enter his gates with gratitude, not because of my own righteousness, but because of Yahushua's righteousness. So we come into the courts with thanksgiving in our hearts because we can step into, into his outer court, you know, and do business there. Oh, hold on, my computer. Ah, hold on, hold on. Oh, one second. Uh, okay, we, we may, okay, sorry about that. All right, so are, are, you, are, you, are you guys able to see? Oh, and, and by the way, Psalm 92.2, I just came across this from my previous studies, but 
this apparently is um, how the priest would start off their morning, right? So when they would start off their morning with a song and, and you know, when they're done with whatever they needed to do, you know, um, in the tabernacle, in the court, in the holy place, and all of that stuff, they come out once again, and they, they end the day, they end the day with a song. So, you know, so that's why to show forth thy I like the tabernacle onto the box, shoebox model. So it just shows you a little bit of the, you know, the the inaccuracies, like the difference, the vast difference. So obviously you see that the shoebox model is so tiny <laughs> compared to how big this can be. I forget, Sister Ashley, was it like six story high? I can't remember um, how, how tall this thing is. Yeah, it's six and, story um, Yeah, it's six story more bigger than the other. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, and, and and you see that the the altar, oh, the brazen altar. Hold on, what's going on with my? Why is it doing that? The brazen altar is in the courtyard. So you see all this uh, space. Oh, what is going on? Hold on a second. My my my, what is happening here? Hmm. Hold on a second. What's going on? Okay. Stuck a little bit. But anyway, so here, a little bit here, you see that um, the brazen altar is where they they do the, the slaughter, the pouring of the blood. Um, it's in the court, and you can see how, oh, what's going on? It's just not clean. I guess it's very... Oh, I don't know what's happening. I, my computer has a mind of its own. <laughs> anyway, okay, we'll get back to that. I, I think you have a pretty good idea of the image that we have of the tabernacle. So I'm going to go back to um, Matthew 5, and we can start our... And, and this is just, let's, let's look at what the word says, right? So blessed, so Baruch, Barak, are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's funny. I'm not doing that. What's going on? Okay. All right. Sometimes when I plug in my computer, it takes a little, there's a bit of a delay because the juice, I don't know what it's doing. But so look at the word poor. Poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? So if you look at the word poor, I'm not going to try to pretend the Greek word of what that sounds like. But um, poor in spirit is, hmm. Okay, yes, we see some of the stuff reduced to beggary, begging, um, helpless, powerless to accomplish an end, right? But I, I like to go deeper, right, into the word. So if you... And I and something caught my attention um, that I wanted to show you. Okay, it's not that one. Ah, what's we can't. Uh, well, then a second. I think it's this one. So if you look at why why is my computer so slow? Um, wow. Um, are you guys still hearing me? I, uh... yeah, okay, so look at this word. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so look at this word, pipto. So remember, this came from the word poor. And we know poor, right? Bankrupt, poor in spirit, like in such the speech of, uh, like, bankruptcy is the way, one, what I can think of. But look at one of the definitions here. Um, it's to... This, the dismemberment of a corpse by decay. And dismemberment of a corpse by decay. And so obviously decay is a very slow version of going back to dust, 
right? So what does that remind you of? So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahuwah. So it's the burnt offering, right? Like, is that just me or we're, the, the, and, and do you remember where Sister Ashley was showing us that the slaughter place is actually not in the court? It's on the, it's literally where the gate of the tabernacle is. So before you can even enter into the court, is my point, is you want to, you know, you want to be in a state where you recognize that there's nothing that you can do, nothing that you can do to save yourself, is my point. Oh, I am trying to control my screen. Um, what's going on? Okay. So to me, this is the entrance. This is happening. This offering is happening at the entrance, at the gate here. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Right. So when we are bankrupt in and of ourselves, then we're ready to surrender everything that we have. Right. And we are ready to receive the provisions of the heavenly court. So if you think of, you know, being financially bankrupt, you file bankruptcy, you surrender your assets, you surrender whatever. And then you need to now subject yourself into whatever the, the bankruptcy laws are. Right. So you're, does that make sense what I'm trying to say, right? So I'm seeing that as a as part of the burnt offering, the the offering that's taking place at the gate of the tabernacle. Okay. But then look what happens is that when you when you are in this state of humility, when you're in this state of surrender, then you're you get the kingdom. You get access to the kingdom is how I'm seeing this, okay? So you, you have an entrance for theirs is the kingdom of Yahuwah, right? So you enter, but, but before that, okay, there's three things too that, that takes place, right? Because um, ah, I'm trying to get to my notes, but when you, um, when, um, when you offer up your living sacrifice, so remember how they care for these, for the animals, right? Um, and they have to meet certain requirements. So they have to be clean. You know, they have to be young. Yes, Yahweh is near those who are brokenhearted. Exactly. So look at, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You see that? So it's part of the grieving process is when you die to yourself, Right when you die to the part that you once loved, right? And let's look at the word mourn here. Ben theo. Theo. So the word mourn, and this is this is like what I do. I just look at the I the ruach impresses something to you know in my in my being, and I, I look. Okay, so there we go to lament, okay, to mourn. And Sister Ashley shared that verse. Yes, Yahuwah is near to those who are brokenhearted. Yes, and he comforts us, right? You see that word more? So he comforts. And the word comfort actually has a part of the definition of the word comfort is to strengthen. So that's the etymology of come, come fort, right? Fort, right? So when you're making a fort. Sorry, my, my computer is really slow. So the next B attitude, okay, so you're mourning, <clears throat> you are surrendering. Yes, go ahead. Is, is that the gift of repentance? Is that the gift of years that the, that the uh, old, old, uh, older generations talked about when the spirit was poured out? And they gave the Absolutely. gift, they received the gift of tears and their whole life changed. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly, godly repentance, yes. Absolutely. And you get strengthened, right? Okay, so you see how um, there's such surrender. Do you, are you sensing the surrender and the, the tears of repentance that you're talking about, the nearness of Yahweh when we are brokenhearted? And then look at this, the blessed are the meek. Okay, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. 
So the meek here, that is the gentleness in spirit. So just like when you are a newborn baby, if you look at a baby, they're so gentle, right? <laughs> right? I don't know, to me. So this, there's this sense of dying to self, you know, and then there's this repentance. And then now you are. And they also cry. Made... And like if we go back <laughs> every time. Right. The children of Israel cried out to their father. He, he answered them. So this is like. That's right. Bankruptcy you're talking about. They were bankrupt then. They cried out like a baby. Like a baby. And you know what else? It's beautiful because I'm sure there's a scripture somewhere, like there's a ton of scripture that talks about how the kingdom is likened to a child, you know? And But when a baby is born, babies don't have teeth, right? So if you look at the, the, the word neshama or yahusha, The word shin is in there, and the, the word shin is teeth. You know, it, it's not in, I don't know, but that's such a beautiful thing for me. Now, if you look at blessed are meek, for they shall inherit the earth, okay? Um, if you look at the brazen altar, you know how there's four horns? What does that represent? The four corners of the earth, right? So do you see how... And I wish I can go back to my picture, but in, in my picture, what is going on? Why can't I? All right, let me just go back here. I wanted to show you that the, um, okay, hold on. I wanted to show you that the first three things, the offering, the, the first three beatitude is done at the entrance gate. You see that? Here, this is all where this is taking place, right? Right, and then blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And so now when you enter through the gate, this is another amazing thing because this is the most commonly asked question. I've sat uh, twice now at Andrew's sessions and they're like, how do you enter the, the court? <laughs> because there's no apparent door there. You don't see an entrance, right? until you see the structure of it all, right? Like, so it, the, the fabric hangs, right? Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley. So the fabric hangs, the garment hangs. So for you to enter the court of Yahuwah, you have to bow yourself. You have to put, you know, you have to go under, <laughs> under the, the garment, the linen, or what, you know, the, the entrance gate. So just like I was saying, in, a, in an earthly court, we bow before a judge. So even entering through the tabernacle, you bow before him, right? Isn't that beautiful? And then you go and uh, wash yourself. And there's the, you know, the, um, the laven where the wash basin is, right? And so we, we've looked at the first three blessed beatitudes. And there's so much more to that. I just, I'm just, you know, just kind of rushing, going through this. And I know that the father is going to reveal more to you. But what I thought was interesting was the fourth beatitude, which is blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What does that remind you of? And where do you think this is now? Inside the holy place, right? Inside the set-apart place. And so we know that in the, one of the furnitures that's in set-apart place is the table of presents, the table of showbread. Right? And so what, what, what does that represent? The bread of life? The bread of righteousness? And when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, oh, we will be filled. <laughs> we will be filled. You see? Okay, so what's next? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Okay, what does that remind you of? <laughs> right? Merciful. Let's look at that. I love, this is such a, this one is so, like there's so much to this one verse here. But if you look at the word merciful, um, I just love the construct of it. Um, all right, it's really slow. 
So Aliman, Aliman, right? So you want to say something? Is, is, is that the fifth one? Is that the fifth one? Um, that this is the fifth one. Yes, this because is that, blessed. That makes me think about the norm. You know, you were talking about working. Oh no, that would be the fourth one. Oh, no, that would be the fourth. Never mind. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. No, I know what you're saying. You're talking about the four. When we're gonna get back to that, yes. You know what? Thank you for bringing that to my awareness too, Sister Ashley. Because remember, in the menorah that we were looking at, there is this three things that you need to overcome, right? So there's that three things before you enter into the midst, which is the fourth, right? Which is a gate, if you think about it too, into further revelation, into further, um, into moving forward to the completion. Because the, you know, what it is, the, the circle or the circular structure, it basically is a picture of perfection or completion. So the first three things here, definitely, it, it, it does talk about the need to surrender the flesh, you know, our own soulish ways or anything um, that is linked to flesh. And then we are to enter into, um, you know, the spirit of humbleness, right? Um, so in this case, the blessed are you who is merciful, for you will obtain mercy. <clears throat> so... To be merciful is to have mercy on or to experience mercy. To experience mercy. So for you to be, to receive mercy, you have to experience mercy yourself, right? And so that is, there's so much to that. And this will go back to the story in the garden, but it's so beautiful how, you know, we've talked about this in the past. It says by, um, uh, truth and mercy purges iniquity, right? So there's this aspect that we need to comprehend. And I think, you know, this is a part, I think, of what um, Sister Ellie, you were touching on earlier, right? So, okay, so look at this, uh, I, I'd Elios. Like to, I'd like to, with five, five generally re um, is, is seen as grace. And mercy and grace, they're just so, so well tied together. And it's the fifth beatitude, you know. <laughs> that yeah. grace is actually what extends mercy anyway. Right, that's right. Oh, that's right. You know, my, so you see how, and then so you're looking at, you know, I love that you say that because if you were to, if you're looking at the tabernacle and the entrance or the opening to the Holy of Holies, the set up, the most set apart place where the Ark of the Covenant is, is also where we see that just behind the veil is where the, the altar of incense is, right? So you can see once again, um, you know, do what we, the, the idea of barak, of blessing, you know, he has given the provision for us to lift up our supplications, our thanksgiving, our request, the prayer for the saints or the set apart brethren, right? And then when, you know, and at the same time, so that's sort of also just behind that is where the Ark of the Covenant is. And what, what sits on top of the Ark of the Covenant? It's the mercy seat, right? Yep. Isn't that beautiful? And so, so to me, I'm imagining while I'm approaching the throne of the Most High, while I'm entering in process of entering into the midst, as I'm, we're going through these steps, right? And, and we're taking the tabernacle as a guide, right? So now we're in the set apart place. We just, we saw that there's the table of showbread where we can take from because we're hungry after the righteousness of Yahweh, right? We're thirsting after him. And now we have this provision of mercy and grace. And then we, now, now you look over to the other side of the room and what is it? This is the sixth, right? I think this is the sixth. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahuwah. So what does this remind you of? <laughs> pure in heart, for they shall see Yahuwah. So when I look at, okay, first of all, see, I look at the word see. So for you to be able to see, you have to turn the lights on, right? So what is the light source in the tabernacle? What is the light source in the set-apart place? It's the menorah, isn't it? <laughs> and the menorah is lit with wicks and what else? Pure oil, essential oil, right? So now look at this. It's just so beautiful. So you are experiencing all of this. So I just love to look at the word pure because um, kataros in Greek, and I know this is just in Greek, but like, um, okay, look at this. Ha! Clean, pure physically. Remember, we're talking about the menorah. Purified by fire. <laughs> wow, right? And so look at this. In a similitude, like a vine cleansed by pruning and so fitted to bear fruit. Isn't that a picture of the menorah? Of the tree of life? Right? Wow, to me, it's just so clear to me it's just so clear so you see you you you've just we're, we're we're in here and we're looking at the furnishings the furniture in the set apart place so if you can imagine we're taking the steps and we're now turning around we've done we've done we've partaken as the priest as uh, in the malki Zadi, as priest of the most high right so now what, where are we because we've done what we're supposed to do remember there this is a process we don't just barge in and walk into the set apart place we had to do business in the outer court we had to do that stuff at the gate first right so now you're ready you've you've beheld the the you know the menorah you're a recipient of mercy and you've partaken from the bread of life and bread of righteousness so now you are a peacemaker peacemaker and you are called the children of yahuwah think about that have, has it ever has it has it come to have have you thought about that that there has to there's a process there's a birthing process before you can be a child <laughs> have you thought about that remember we talked about the holy place looking like a womb okay go ahead sister ellie well, my my mind is going to peacemaker, going to yeah. the the altar of incense and the prayers that are made because we've we've partaken in the mercy because we received his righteousness because he indwells us for feeding on him. We've seen his light and that yeah. light. He says, "Ye are the light of the world," and so <laughs> here we are. We're his light, and so now. His, his words giving us to to pray and intercede and it, it's just beautiful <laughs> <laughs> i love it do you know what else um if you have you looked at the name the what jerusalem means have you looked at what jerusalem means does anybody know i, I would never look but the ruach told me to look so have you guys looked it has peace uh wait i'm trying to think yeah teachers no. of I, I just read it the other day oh yeah <laughs> what is it no, what is it that means you're who's right? <laughs> <laughs> right well yeah shalom is definitely jerusalem yeah you're right but I, sister florence you're gonna say something no i think i forgot the rest but i know there's peace that i'm it was really beautiful i just forgot the rest well, it, it just, he calls he calls he calls uh, Je his his pet name, if you want to call it that, for Israel is Jeshurun, the upright, and Jerusalem would be the up uprightness and peace. Maybe I don't know. Yes. Well, let, let, I want to go to hold on. I want I want to go and show you. Actually, you know, I'll go here. So my computer is okay. It means teachers of peace. <laughs> That's what it means. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wow. Exactly. Right. So when you, why is there a new Jerusalem that's coming down? 
Okay, I, I, I saw this in the, hold on, in the Greek. So let, I, I'm going to check in the, old te, in the Hebrew. But in, in the Greek, I just, I just have a, an appreciate. Hold on a second. Where is it? Jerusalem. It, it, here we go. Jerusalem. Salem. So, set ye double peace. Um, Jerusalem. Okay, teaching of peace. That's the word. Teaching of peace. Wow, can you just, this is what it's about. I mean, we, it's about shalom. A double, and did you see the first meaning? Double portion, double shalom. <laughs> right? So have you thought about that? We are supposed to be image bearers of the Most High. So for us to be walking around and to be um, be called by his name, you know, to be carrying, to be called his son and daughter of the Most High, we are to be representing his kingdom. And his kingdom is about teaching shalom. And so we are peace shalom makers. And that has to do with becoming a child or, or this is, this is, the purpose, the child carries the name of the father. Makes sense. Okay, so you see how beautiful that is. And then so what happens now, okay? So now you've gone through the inner court, right, or the set-apart place. And so obviously you don't stay in there. You'd have to go out and face the world, right? You'd have to come out, right? And you'd have to go out and, and, and our, that's why our feet, that's why they have the wash basin because our feet gets dirtied from walking this world, right? We get, we get dust from our feet. But what happens is once we've been in the presence of the king, once we've been in that set apart place, guess what happens? We are now equipped because it says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. So, you know, imagine, and then look at the repeat here. The, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See the repeat? So remember at the beginning, it says, for the blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I said that that's like the gate, right? So now you're exiting the gate, <laughs> but you are barak beyond measure. <laughs> you are blessed. And so even when you are persecuted, for what? You can expect persecution because why? Because for righteousness sake, we are, we are, when we are righteous, when we are standing in his right, we are, we can expect persecution. You see that? And then there's more provisions, right? So now you've sort of exited the gate, but there's a, don't worry, yours is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you can come back and be cleansed again, you know, surrender into your purposes, right? Partake wash, uh, you will be strengthened because you're mourning, you will be comforted, you will be inheriting the earth, you, you know, because you're, you're humble. And then, you know, you have all this access, this, but then there's more. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So what is the double portion as I see here? is rejoice. See, you got to see, regardless of this, this is heavy stuff. I mean, we read that pretty fast. But experiencing this is very heavy. It's it's not easy, I should say. It's not heavy because we, we our burdens are given over to your Yahusha. But you see, this is, this is not easy. This part here, this is sort of like a call. It's like a a reminder when you're leaving the gate of the, the, the of, of Yahuwah's presence. Don't worry, for righteousness sake, you're going to get persecuted, right? And then you actually experience <laughs> the persecution. And how do you experience the persecution? By being reviled, by being falsely accused, but again, rejoice. Do you see that? And I was sharing this with Sister Ashley. Rejoice if you break the word apart return, return to joy. Do you see that? Kind of like repent, return to the top, repent, penthouse. So rejoice is returning to joy. That's what it rejoice. I see in the word rejoice. 
and be exceeding glad. <laughs> for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. Think about that. And then, and then just a couple more things. Then it says you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Okay, so we kind of, now we kind of understand the light aspect, okay? That, that's, we've talked a lot about that, right? It's easy to visualize with a menorah, okay? But what about the salt? Have you ever thought, yes, so we use salt to preserve all that stuff. That's beautiful. But what about salt? And this is the last thing, right? And, okay, oh, I talked about mercy. I had something about mercy. Sorry, okay. So mercy, okay, one of the things, I just want to go back a little bit. In mercy, one of the things that it's part of the definition in mercy is a stork. You see this stork? Okay. And I looked at stork. It looks like um, a curved neck. It's like a bird, right? It's a, a type of bird. And it has this bowing of the head. And I, 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 I found what's called a, a stork. I forget what this is called. But this type of bird, look, it bows. <laughs> it's so cute. But anyway, I just, that was part of my note with, with mercy. But um, okay, so you are the salt of the earth. Okay, I, I wanna, and this is just the last thing I wanted to, to talk about. Um, if you look at the table of contents, not table of contents, table of elements. Okay, so this is the table of elements. And remember, we're talking about the menorah, which has the seven, right? The seven branches, including the vine, okay? So I thought it was interesting that salt or the word halogen. So if you look at the, the seventh group in the table of elements, okay, it is called the halo, halogens or halogens, okay? So what are halogens? So halogen is, is Greek, uh, it's from the Greek word house, which means salt producer. I thought that, that was so interesting, salt producer. And so halo means salt producer, gene, means giving birth to a gene, okay? So why is that so interesting? Um, these group seven A elements in the um, table of elements, which is basically what is made up of everything that is that we're seeing around us, right? So it's made up of these seven elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. And so the, these, these group is what you call a halogen or a salt former. And what's interesting about that, okay, is that these seven elements have seven valence electrons in their highest energy orbitals. Okay, so, so these, these groups are, it, how do I make it simple? They are ready to bond with others with other elements that have that share the same electrons okay so there's this bonding that takes place so when we're and i have a little bit of a picture here electrons if you want to look at electrons and break down the word what do you see in the word electrons elect right elect so what i'm saying is there seems to be this idea of the salt of the earth at the same time it's we are forming bonds with like-minded spiritual you know um set apart people of yeah and when you are a salt producer or a salt former you are ready you're ready to share your electron <laughs> and when you share your electron it your electron is is sort of on the outer part of the element of, of the of the chemical right chemical element and it's waiting it's waiting to bond with someone it's waiting to bond and when that bonds happen you know the power in that you know what happens so that's just something that i thought was very interesting and i wanted to point out that word fluorine <laughs>